Hello friends, Namaskar. Filing of the ITR, that is income tax return, is a very important responsibility casted on the shoulder of every assessee. Through this particular responsibility, the assessee offers his income to the income tax department for a kind of assessment. Now the question comes that when you file the ITR, there may be some mistakes which are common mistakes which should not be there in your ITR. So through this video, I am trying to put up my views based on my experience in past that what are the common mistakes which are committed by the assessees while filing their ITR. And if you will take care about these mistakes that they do not appear in your ITR, then you are going to file an ITR which is a perfect ITR. So I must say that for the coming return season, coming ITR season for the assessment year 22-23, if you are going to take care about this particular video, then you are certainly going to get benefited a lot. So my dear friends, let me come straight on the point from the point one, which I am trying to put up before you that generally it is seen that there are mistakes at the part of assessees in claiming incorrect deductions or exemptions in their return. Say for an example, are you sure about the amount of the deduction which you are claiming in ITR may it be a deduction under section 80C for the investment like LIC premium, PPF contribution and are you also sure about the exemptions which you are claiming in the return say for an example HRA exemption. See these deductions and exemptions should be as per the provisions of the law not only with reference to the quantum but also with reference to the genuineness. I give you an example, if we claim deduction under section 80G and in such a situation wherein you have contributed to an organization where you are allowed to claim 50% of the donation amount as deduction. Suppose by ignorance you claim that particular deduction under 100% category, then what will happen? Nowadays the trust are required to report the donations in form 10BD. If that form is filed by the relevant trust to whom you have donated under 80G and that is matched with your ITR, naturally the department may find that the trust was allowed to give 50% donation related receipt but you have claimed 100% donation. So you should be careful that you are claiming the proper deduction, you are claiming the proper exemption because such kind of mistake if found subsequently by the department while processing the return or during the course of an assessment then you will be liable to pay not only the tax of the difference, but you will be also liable to pay the interest and penalty to the income tax department. So this is first mistake which I wanted to bring into your information. Now I will move further. Now I come to the second mistake which I have generally noted that while claiming the home loan benefits, you must be sure that whether you are eligible to claim the relevant amount of interest and principal related deduction of a home loan in ITR. Say for an example, if you are claiming deduction of interest under section 24 clause B and you are claiming principal related deduction under section 80C, are you claiming it as per the final interest principal certificate or you are claiming it as per the provisional interest principal certificate of the relevant financial institution? Because Usually while we submit the detail to the employer that is as per the provisional certificate and by the time we are filing the return there may be some changes in the final figure. So you should reconcile that. Similarly you should also see that you are claiming home loan related interest benefit only in relation to a property of which you are an owner or a co-owner. So if you are not at all an owner then how you are claiming the deduction? Yes I may add if you are claiming home loan related deduction in relation to a property which is in your spouse name and wherein you are contributing the installment amount. Then I don't see any problem. You can be treated to be deemed owner and then you can claim the deduction of such particular properties interest principle in your ITR. But if you are not at all a contributor to the EMI, you are not at all a contributor to the asset and you are claiming the deduction of such house property related interest principle in the ITR, probably you are doing a mistake. So these are the important points or the mistakes which should not occur in your ITR. That is a suggestion. Now I bring before you another important observation in form of mistake which is found that while you are filing an ITR 
have you duly reconciled your itr with form 26 years and rather if i step up one step more i would say have you reconciled your itr with the annual information statement many a time it is seen that when an assessee files itr he or she might have not matched the figures of the itr with what figures are reported in form 26 years say for an example your 26 years form is saying interest from fds is 55000 Whereas you have shown only fifty-two thousand. Now there is a difference of rupees three thousand. You are bound to get an intimation from the department regarding this difference. So why to get into such kind of trouble later rather than going into this later before filing the ITR? You should reconcile these things. And I must suggest, my dear friends, I have seen nowadays people at large, SSCs at large, are also filing the returns through online portals, wherein they simply. give their scan details to the relevant portal and the itr is filed in those things i have found that since there is a lack of consultant being absent so what happens that you are not able to properly either give your documents to the relevant presenter or the details which are given to you given by you are not properly processed before itr filing so my suggestion to you is a strong suggestion that why not go to your consultant why not you i am not saying that all will come to me i am simply saying that you should go to your tax consultant you should go to your chartered accountant who would look into the case and after understanding the details of the case he would be able to suggest you how to file a return in an errorless manner let me also share my views on this particular point that i have seen that people in india nowadays because of corona effect and all and because of the return related pressures that fds are giving to less return we are more or less inclined towards the security market transaction and many of us might have booked losses even in securities transaction so such people who have indulged into security market transaction even if they have booked loss they might be under impression that since i have lost why to report the relevant transaction in the itr i don't want to carry forward so that logic would not work in your annual information statement you may see security values transaction sales values are duly appearing so i must suggest that even if you have loss or you have profit then you should rather than filing itr 1 file itr 2 as an individual and duly report the profit or loss in the itr similarly if you have done any real estate transaction and through that that real estate transaction you have any capital gain or loss why not to report in itr some people might say mr bhatia since we have reinvested into another asset so why to file the uh, file in the itr those detail no sir even if you have reinvested as per the scheme of law you should report in the itr similarly it is seen that while offering the interest income the saving bank interest fd related interest is not duly offered in the itr even if you may be under the impression that saving bank interest is not exceeding 10000 so why to report in itr but if you see your ais in that you will find that saving bank interest is reported by the bank so my suggestion to you is that if you have any income of such kind you should report that income duly in the itr even if you are claiming loss even if you are claiming exemption now this topic of claiming benefit of section 44 ad is applicable for those who are into business or profession and it is seen that people who are into business profession particularly those who are into business they might be offering their itr under the category 44 ad so have you understood with the help of your charter accountant with your tax consultant sir what is section 44 ad and how to offer the turnover how to offer the income in section 44 ad if you will be able to understand these things then probably the mistake pertaining to section 44 ad would not be there in your itr as a businessman so my suggestion to you is that sir before you file itr under section 44 ad because sometime i have seen people casually offer their return just to make a strength for the purpose of obtaining a loan in future and they show anything as a business but showing anything as a business without having a gst then it may attract a gst repercussion also so you should be careful about showing the income under section 44 ad and for this aspect you should consult with your consultant this one is the most important observation of mine regarding the mistakes in the itr which i could find 
that sir people are not analyzing their bank statement while filing itr few of them might be not showing these statement to their consultant few of them might be filing through online portals so they are of the mind that okay let's give form 16 let's give some security transaction statement why to show the bank statement to somebody being a chartered accountant being a tax consultant i generally do what that i ask my client to give me the copy of their bank statement which i generally see on the credit side usually if there is a cash deposit if there is any dividend income if there is any credit of the nature of gift i may be asking them and understanding the tax repercussion on the same which i'll be further consulting with the client to show those items in the return which are required to be reflected in the return so sir my suggestion to you is before filing itr please analyze your bank statement properly in the context of income tax law and if such consultation happens to be with the professional that is a better approach now let me put up before you some other mistakes which are also forming part of this common mistake ignoring clubbing provision if there is a minor son or daughter and they had any income which is required to be clubbed in your hands if you are ignoring that that is a mistake wrong application of set off provision sometime it is seen ideally it should not happen but long term loss being set off against the short term gain these mistakes should not be there claiming relief under section 89 without filing form 10e if you have received any arrear of salary and in that case you are claiming relief under section 89 of income tax law you should duly file form 10e if you are not doing that then your return would be stuck in the processing and a demand may be created claiming benefit of new slab rate without filing form 10 ie if you are claiming a new slab rate benefit then form 10 ie should also be filed before due date expiry of 139 reconciliation of income tax and gst turnover is a very very critical aspect many a time i have seen sir that people don't reconcile their gst turnover with the income tax turnover and if that is the mistake which is found by the income tax department either they will report it to the gst department or they will ask you that look in gst you had following turnover and in income tax you are giving this turnover so why not the relevant addition should be made so you should be cautious on this kind of error even I know my dear friends and you may also suggest me some more mistakes which may be prevailing but the most common one which I could find out for the benefit of public at large I have suggested here and since the season is coming for ITR filing for the assessment year 2223 so I thought why not create such kind of thing which should prompt the assessees at large to file their ITR to the extent in a correct manner I hope you will all get benefited through this video thank you very much for being with me wishing you all the best जय हिंद